Uh, we're joined by uh, someone who knows the story uh, from the inside, you might say. She's a former Tehran correspondent, senior correspondent for French daily newspaper Le Figaro, uh, Delphi Minoui. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. And you've brought with you the translation in English of uh, your book on your experience uh, going there. It's a mix of reporting and, and also uh, finding your own family roots there uh, in Iran. I'm writing you from uh, Tehran is the book. Thanks for being with us here on France 24. Thank you so much. Just first, in that report, you heard uh, one of those activists talking about his fears about the surveillance, with surveillance by this Iranian state, which extends beyond its borders. Yes, we all knew about the surveillance inside the Iranian society, inside Iran. I mean, when you live in Iran, you are used to have your phone being tapped, you are used to being followed in the streets, you are used to being called by the intelligence services to interrogate you. But there is this new trend, definitely, about um, agents of the regime um, going after dissidents in exile. Um, living in Istanbul, I, could, I can witness it as well, because I'm in touch with uh, different uh, um, opponents that recently moved to Turkey, thinking they would find, finally find a, a safe haven. But that's not the case. Um, all of a sudden, they receive a message on their mobile phone showing the picture of their, of their building, of their apartment building, uh, and uh, warning them with a message, we know where you live, we know how to get you, we know how to kill you. And you, uh, in the book, describe uh, here in Paris once getting burgled and... Uh uh, whoever burgled you was interested in your computer. That was so strange back then, and it, it, it shows that it's like a strategy that has always been used by the regime, but now it's becoming more, um, happening more often. But indeed, uh, back in 2006, um, I, when I was a reporter for Le Figaro based in uh, Tehran, um, I was surprised one day, I was traveling to Paris, I, uh, I just left uh, for a few minutes uh, the place I was staying out. And when I came back, indeed, uh, my computer had disappeared, my external hard drive had disappeared. But strangely, my jewelry hadn't disappeared. And since then, I, I never got any news from, from this material. Mm. It's been six months now. Uh, is it petering out? So it's really hard to say. Indeed, um, I think we are reaching a new, a new, a new, a new step. Um, at the beginning, uh, we saw thousands of people going down to the streets, women um, pulling out their scarves, burning them. Uh, but the crackdown has been so aggressive, so harsh, that uh, the protesters now are trying to find new strategies, more creative strategies to keep on fighting against the system, but in different ways. So you can see people, for instance, chanting slogans uh, in the night, um, on the rooftops of the buildings. Uh, we've seen on the social networks all these amazing videos produced by uh, mostly young women without any scarf, dancing like here, like in the West, um, as a way to, to keep up with the slogan of this movement, which is Zan Zendegi Ozodi, women, life, freedom. And that's the big difference from when you were based in Tehran is social media. Definitely, you, you, social media these days has, has become a, a real uh, platform to amplify uh, the voices of, of the protesters. I mean, this is a movement um, for the freedom of women, but not only, it's also against the corruption, uh, it's uh, against uh, a theocratic system which, is, uh, uh, which looks like the middle age compared to what the young people want today. And apart from the social network, what, what's really different from what I witnessed when I was living in Iran, when I followed the protest of 99, 2009, um, it used to be uh, mostly in big cities. Now it's all over. It's the north, south, east, west, big urban areas, very small villages. Um, it's uh, the, the, the Iranians uh, from the north. The, it's, uh, it's linked also with minorities, ethnical minorities, religious minorities. It's the whole Iran today which is shouting for, for a change of the regime, which is brand new. Before you would listen to people, hear people asking for a reform within the system. Now people are just fed up. They want just to get rid 
of, of the Republic, of it, the Islamic Republic. It's been a good week for the regime. First, there was uh, that deal broker by China with Saudi Arabia. And then uh, this Thursday, news that uh, uh, one of Iran's top security chiefs is uh, in the UAE. Uh, this normalization of ties uh, with regional foes, is that good or bad news? I think Iran is realizing that it's becoming more and more isolated on uh, the international uh, arena. So definitely, and it's been going on for the last months and last years, Iran is definitely uh, trying to reach out to, to the East, either Russia by supporting Russia in the Ukra Ukrainian war by giving uh, some, some drones, uh, or as we see now, China, which plays a key role these days. There is a new axis going on. And uh, this deal that has been sealed with uh, Saudi um, shows uh, like maybe a new step. I mean, uh, let's not forget that these two countries are the, the, the biggest en used to be the biggest enemies in the uh, Muslim Arab world. I mean, these two countries have launched uh, uh, proxy wars uh, in Yemen, Iraq, uh, Lebanon. And so this rapprochement may lead possibly to something that would be more like a, a, a ease situation in the region. But let's see if it's more strategic or if it's really real. I think Iran is finding a good opportunity in this rapprochement as Iran definitely knew these last six months that uh, Riyadh was trying to, try to kind of manipulate the opposition to try to make the regime collapse. Let's just give one example. Uh, a very important TV in exile has been and we all know about that, has been financed by, by Saudis for the last month. And the, the regime was shaking, the Iranian regime was shaking by seeing so. All right. And we'll, we'll see, of course, how, how that plays out. Uh, the book is called I'm Writing You from Tehran. Delphi Minoui, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks a lot.